I'm Elizabeth Lesser, and I am the co-founder of Omega Institute, which is a personal growth retreat center. And I also am an author. I've written quite a few books, and um, most of them are about taking care of yourself and making your life everything you want it to be. I wrote my new book, Cassandra Speaks, about the old stories in our culture that still cling to us. And people often ask me, why did you write about things like Adam and Eve or the Greek myths or ancient literature? Why, why should we go back there? And I always say, because back there is still inside of us. If you think of something like the Adam and Eve story, this idea that she was born second, but she was first to sin. Even if you're not religious, even if you barely know the Adam and Eve story, that is the origin story of our culture, that there's something about women that's wrong with us, that we have to change that we're too emotional, we're not this, we're not that. It's all compared to the idea of man. That's not that man is bad and woman is good. That's not what I mean. What I mean is until we claim our uh, womanness, which is unbelievably fabulous, different from men, it's together, men and women make the whole human story, but those old stories uh, have a lot to tell us about the stuff that still we need to still unpack and get rid of. So that's one way for women to tell new stories and bolder stories and more confident stories is to realize that there are old stories haunting us still. And um, until we kind of help ourselves and the culture get rid of that, idea of women as second born, but there's something wrong with us, um, we can't kind of really step into our own story. The first thing I would recommend to people to come out of the gloom is to feel okay that you're in the gloom. I think a lot of people feel I shouldn't be in the gloom. I have so much going for me. I didn't suffer as much as so-and-so. I, I have a job, I have a family, whatever it is. But that doesn't matter. This has been hard for everybody. So I always say to people, put your hand on your heart, let yourself go there, ask that gloomy self. You know, you can even pat your heart and say, that's okay, gloomy self. You're okay, you're not bad, I got you. Now tell me, what's what's been hard? What have you lost? And then listen and, and, and learn and let yourself be exactly how you are. And I swear to God, it's a miracle. If you don't fight the direction of the river of your soul, you get to flow. If you fight it, you're gonna stay stuck. So my first thing is like, it's okay to be gloomy. It's okay to feel you lost stuff. Let yourself feel that. And then you get to ask, what could I have learned from these times? How do I want to emerge different, changed, even better? But until you let yourself feel the loss, you're not gonna be able to ask that question. What have you come to teach me, pandemic? You know, first impressions are so critical in everything, at work, with relationships, with friendships, even with our own kids. This is the way you are perceived in a nonverbal way. And it's not just our hair or our clothes or our jewelry or our makeup or our youth or our age. It's more than that, it's so deep. Are you comfortable in your own skin? Are you comfortable deep down in your weirdness, your strangeness, your difference from someone else? Do you sing a happy song about who you are in your depth? And most of us, that's really hard. This sense of I better hide all the kind of strange things about me. The sad thing is those strange things, they're your best things. How you present yourself in your clothing, your hair, has a lot to do with how you feel about yourself. If you're always trying to be someone else, it doesn't ring true. And you know what it's like when you're in the presence of someone 
who's comfortable in who they are from the inside out. So I think it's awesome to try to reclaim your authentic core. I think of life as a journey through four landscapes. There's the landscape of the mind, the body, the heart, and the soul. And I have tools in all of those landscapes, like in the mind, meditation to calm yourself. Agitation and anxiety are really cover authenticity and we all suffer from it, and COVID has given us all a huge dose of it. Meditation is so helpful. It's not anything fancy. It's a way to quiet the blah, 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 the worry, all the voices. And as that water, the, the agitation in the water sinks, 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 something clear and amazing arises. So that's one tool. In the landscape of the body, we have so many, so much painful baggage around our body. We're too old, we're too fat, we're too skinny, we're not buff enough, our hair, our everything. We walk around a bundle of nerves about how we look. And a lot of it has to do with programming <clears throat> about this unattainable image that we're supposed to live up to. When in reality, we're all so beautiful. We're all so amazing. So um, exercise, eating well, so that we feel grateful just for this chariot we get to ride around in through life, our body. That's a tool, lots of tools in the landscape of the body. And in the landscape of the heart, the emotions, knowing what you feel is a way to know what other people feel. And if we respect each other's feelings, we wouldn't have as much horrible conflict that we see in the world now. Like if you know what you feel and you respect what you feel, whether it's grief or anger, love, enthusiasm, you can find that in the other person. And this division we have in our country now, underneath all of our ideas and values is our humanness. And the emotional realm is where we get in touch with each other's humanness. And then there's the soul, the landscape of the soul, which is spirituality and ways to get in touch with your eternal self. If I am feeling in touch with my authenticity, I know that I'm radiating something in my face. I'm holding my body stronger. I'm presenting myself to the world with gratitude and what I like to call humble swagger like i got this and i am soft and open to you and i know that affects how i look and i know it if when someone comes into my office and they're feeling sad and depressed and anxious and weird i see it on their face so we say that we shouldn't care what other people think about us. And on some level, that's true. But on the other level, we're in community and relationship all the time. What somebody thinks about us and what we think about someone else, that's called relationship. And that's a dynamic. We can never get rid of that. Anything that strikes us on the surface level, the hair, the face, the room, those books she has behind her, the color of her wall, you know, like, I don't want you to judge me by that or think that's who I am. I want us to kind of look into each other and say, oh, who are you? Oh, what's your story? Oh, what's your pain? Let's be intimate with each other. That's what I'm interested in. And so when I get dressed, or when I decide what I want my hair to look like or what earrings I'm going to wear, I ask myself, not just on the surface, but on the depth, who am I? Who should I express in my clothing? You know, like I'm going to a meeting in New York, let's say to meet with my publisher. Oh, I should wear a black suit jacket 
and a white shirt and I should make sure that my hair isn't fly away and blah, blah, blah. That's not, who am I doing that for? That's not what anybody else wants. They want me to be who I am, just like I want you to be who you are.